Hello again, minions. Wheezy here. And today we are going to talk about why Cold War just sucks. <laughs> Okay, so I've got kind of a hit list of things we're going to go through here, and I'm going to roll in some gameplay clips as we go, just to kind of back it up. But this is really just going to be an opportunity to be a nice bitch fest for all of us. Um, so you're going to get to see my face as uh, I complain, and you're going to see gameplay too, um, mercifully for you. <laughs> and uh, down below, you guys join in and tell me what's bugging you about cold war or for i know some of you have given up on playing it all together why you gave up what you're playing instead uh and let's uh let's just kind of get into it so i'm going to start with uh i got kind of three categories i'm gonna start with technical issues because i feel like these are the this is the thing that really is killing me about cold war right now so the first thing is they're kind of the same thing the first two issues which are lag and hit detection and, and I say that because the game doesn't feel stuttery like you would traditionally associate with lag where you're kind of teleporting around the map. When I say lag, what I mean is what? there's an issue where you get killed around corners a lot. Like, it happens so frequently that it feels like, even though I know it's not like literally most of the time, it feels like most of the time when I'm getting killed, it's horseshit. I, I use a lot of cover when I play, and uh, for those of you who've seen the old War College episodes, or when I get back into the new reboot of it, I recommend using cover. And part of using cover, especially in a game like Cold War, where the time to kill isn't extremely high, except for snipers, which we'll get to, uh, you can actually engage in a fight, take some damage, and then move behind cover, it feels like relatively easily. The issue in Cold War that you'll run into is you'll be in a gunfight, you'll get a few hits on a guy, right? You'll tar start taking some damage and be like, oh shit, I need to take cover. You'll step behind cover and then you'll get killed. Like even, like not only on your screen will you see yourself physically move behind a giant object where the other, where the enemy can't even see you anymore and then you will fall down and die. But then you watch the kill cam and it's exactly the same where on their screen they're like shooting at you and you move behind cover and you see their gun track towards kind of where you're heading because they see you moving behind cover and the bullets still are like over here and you die. This isn't like wall penetration or any of that stuff. It happens all the time and this is the, probably the most frustrating thing about Cold War because it feels like playing tactically isn't a huge help because the game fucking lies to you and and tricks you and cheats. <laughs> um, and what goes along with this is bad hit detection. And I, I don't think these are the same issue because they don't necessarily appear to be a lag issue, not necessarily around corners. You will see kill cams all the time and you will experience things that are suspicious all the time. Especially with the snipers, they're the most obvious because they're one-hit kill machines where you'll see a crosshair in a kill cam and the sniper will be aiming over here and fire and he'll get a hit marker and you'll die. And it's just like, what? And it's sometimes it's in tangent with kind of slightly being behind cover where a, you'll get shot and killed when you couldn't have been visible <laughs> where they shot you. So, like I say, these two are kind of interrelated kind of the same thing, but at the same time, they, they're they very distinct. When it happens, it's very distinct. There's a big difference between, hey, I was clearly around that corner when I got killed, and hey, that guy didn't even shoot anywhere near me. Why am I dead? Um, so those are the two major technical issues that plague me a lot. Um, less frequent, but equally if not more irritating are random crashes and UI bugs in the game. Like literally, Crashing back to, I always say desktop, even though I play on PlayStation. Crashing back to the desktop, the entire game just dies sometimes. It's been, it hasn't happened in a little while recently, so maybe their patches have increased some of the stability. But since the game has come out, there have been more than a hand few, a hand, hand few, handful of times when the game has just completely shat on itself and died. Also, sometimes. UI dialogues just pop up and say, error, UI error, X08, like some hex code. Like, what kind of mainstream AAA game, Call of Duty, displays UI errors to the user? I mean, I'm a software guy. 
okay? So I get having bugs and errors. Why is there a mechanism in your game that pops up a dialogue showing a useless error code to a user? That's just bad programming. Like, okay, so you can't always avoid bugs happening, but in a game where you're releasing it to people playing a video game, to have a dialogue with text pop up and show the user a hex error code during gameplay. This isn't a hard crash to the desktop. You hard crash to the desktop, that little error dialogue pop pops up, says, do you wanna share this with us and share us? That? That's different, that's like, a, that's like an error reporting system. This is literally, you're playing a game and it pops up a UI error. And then it just, you click okay or whatever and it goes away. Why put that? I just, sometimes I can't even. That's my software side. Okay, moving on. Those are the technical issues. Those are like the things that I feel like are just because the game is not well built. Beyond that, let's get into some gameplay issues because these are what? more frustrating in the fact that they should have been, they should be fixed. They should be tweaked because this was how the game was designed. And so it makes it more frustrating than, oh, the game just doesn't work right. Like, okay. So technology can be complicated, although Modern Warfare seemed to do a much better job with technical issues than Cold War has, even though it's an older game. And, but the gameplay issues feel like you did this on purpose, you sons of bitches. Um, so this one, I don't, I don't see people talking about a lot, but it really bugs the fuck out of me because I like stun grenades and doing stun checks, especially I've always, in Call of Duty games, I've always loved stun checks. And what stun checks are, for those of you who don't know, is you throw a stun grenade or a flash grenade. And since those also get hit markers, like shooting someone, you can throw stun grenades like around corners and stuff like that. And if you get a hit marker, then you know that there's somebody there. So I love using stun checks and flash checks. I don't use flashes very much in Cold War, so that's why I always usually call it stun checks. Anyway, in Cold War, Flash grenades and stun grenades bounce off of the walls like fucking ultra bouncy balls. Like, I can be halfway across the map and hurl a goddamn stun grenade up towards a window, and it'll hit, like, above the window. And instead of, in, a, in all previous Call of Duties, or, like, Modern Warfare, instead of it hitting and physics kicking in, and it, like, acting like a metal object like that would, and just kind of clunking and falling, right? Because it's not... It's not made of rubber, so it shouldn't rebound at Mach 7, right? Instead of it just hitting the wall and kind of dropping to the ground or maybe bouncing off a little bit, you're a human, right? You've thrown things at stuff. You know reasonably how things react when you throw them. If you throw a bouncy ball at a wall, you know how that's going to react versus if you throw, like, a snowball at a wall versus if you throw a rock, right? If you throw a rock at a wall, it's not going to bounce off and hit you in the face, right? A rubber ball will. In Cold War, flash grenades and stun grenades act like fucking rubber balls. It's ridiculous. I have stunned and flashed myself in Cold War more than I have in all other Call of Duty games combined. And I've been playing Call of Duty since, I mean, multiplayer, like really Call of Duty 4. Years. And in, in the couple of months since Cold War has been out, I have stunned and flashed myself more times than I have in all of the other games combined. Okay, that's that's my big individual irritation. Not everybody's getting as 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 plagued by that as I am. Um, another huge thing: you can't save your weapon builds. You can't save your custom blueprints, like in Modern Warfare. What? And here's what's worse about it: in Warzone, they've included all the Cold War weapons into Warzone, right? And also the Modern Warfare ones. It's all unified in Warzone. In Warzone, you can create custom blueprints for the the Modern Warfare weapons, but you cannot create custom blueprints for the Cold War weapons. Even in Warzone, where the fucking game has the mechanic for saving custom blueprints, you cannot do it for Cold War weapons. And in the entire Cold War game, the concept doesn't exist. And I believe, just again, really someone's gonna, and, oh. It was, it was a call from Scam Likely. They, they must be my best friends because they call me all the time. Anyway. <laughs> the, I mean, I, from a software standpoint, the reason they probably can't do it is because Warzone is reading from both databases. And apparently the Cold War database is built so that they have nowhere to store a custom blueprint at all. And what, to add to that frustration, you can buy fucking blueprints for Cold War. They have the mechanisms in place to save a configuration. Would you stop beeping to me, computer? To save a configuration 
for a weapon, and they will sell those to you, but you can't save them yourself. What is going on? <laughs> so, it just feels like one of the biggest oversight. And it's like, okay, well, maybe they were rushed on development. The game has been out for months now. Why is this not in the game? There, It makes no fucking sense. Give us the ability to save our weapon builds. I'm tired of having to switch and reattach every fucking attachment and memorize which ones were the ones that I wanted. Okay, other gameplay issues. Snipers are fucked. They are the bane of Cold War. They are one-hit kill, monsters, and they do not flinch when you shoot them. The I have saved more snipers are bullshit clips than any other ones. I'll roll, obviously, quite a few of them in here. But the biggest issue with, it, with, with those is I will get in a gunfight with a sniper where I have an advantage. I shoot first, I have an assault rifle, we're at close to medium range, right? And I'm shooting them with multiple shots, da 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 and then boom, I'm dead. And on the kill cam, right, his aim, like when you get shot six times with an AK or an AR, when you're using a sniper rifle, it doesn't move your aim at all. You're just like, I'm a laser beam of death. And it was especially uh, noticeable, because in Modern Warfare, I remembered, I'm pretty sure snipers flinched when you shot them, playing some Modern Warfare last night, and sure enough, a sniper got me with a good shot. Like, I say, yeah, that was a good shot, because Modern Warfare feels like when I get killed, someone made a good play. The sniper was across the map, and I was shooting him and hitting him, and when I watched the kill cam, his view kept flinching. It flinched like twice as I hit him, and he pulled it back down and got a good shot, and it looked like it was on me and everything. Like, I was like, oh, well played, sir. Cold War? No. I hit people over and over and over again, and their aim just doesn't, they, it's just like, it's like they don't even care that they're being shot. They're just like, you're gonna die in just a second. Once, as soon as my crosshair gets near you, because of the hit detection issues, as soon as my crosshair's anywhere near you, you're gonna be dead, and it's not gonna matter. It's awful. I, I remember during the, it was either the alpha or the beta, when, when they were like, oh, we made snipers really good to, to, to get people to inspire people to play with them so we could test them. It doesn't feel like they're that level of good. They don't aim down sights quite as fast as they did when they were like really overpowered in like the beta. But now they're, they aim down sights slightly slower and they're fucking just as bad. One hit kill machines and the hit detection's awful. Like they can shoot near you and you're dead and they don't flinch when you shoot them. Awful. Uh, score streaks, I talked about this before. Like the game launched with the alpha and the beta and it has turned out to be kind of uh, just what we suspected it would be. Score streaks are awful. <laughs> Um, not only do they, they're less rewarding in modern warfare when I get a score streak um, especially the way that I ran score streaks where I usually start at a five streak with like a cluster strike and then go up from there it feels like hey man I when I got this score streak I'm doing good I can get score streaks in Cold War during a bad game like I can be doing shitty and our team can be getting fucking stomped and I'll get a sentry gun and a chop chopper like what <laughs> like what like, I'll die three times in a row, and I'll throw a grenade and kill someone and be like, Hey, come back. And then it's like, here's a sentry gun. It's like, the fuck? And as we suspected early on, especially in uh, team-based games, um, and objective games especially, at the end of the game, it's fucking kill streak palooza. Everybody's fucking kill streak start. <laughs> there's cluster strikes and air strikes, and, and there's choppers, and it's fucking insane. Like, I remember score streaks in previous Call of Duty games, and it was kind of like, the score streaks were like support-based things. The things that actually killed you were still kill streaks. You couldn't just kind of be shitty and get a sentry gun, <laughs> right? It's, I don't, I don't, it's not, it's not good. Uh, briefly, spawns are awful. Like, the main, the two main issues I have with spawns, they're not consistently awful, but they are, but they are more awful than the Modern Warfare ones, which is the direct comparison. You replace a game, that's what you're going to be compared to. I'm sorry. There were bad spawns in Call of Duty's in the past. Really bad spawns, okay? They're not quite the worst spawns Call of Duty's ever had, but they're bad. I will be in a team-based game. My entire team will be on one side of the map, fighting, fighting, fighting. I'll get killed. It'll spawn me, like, on their side of the map, which A, is unfair for them, 
And B, unfair for me, right? Sometimes I'll get behind, I'll spawn in behind their team, kill two or three of them because they're like, what the fuck is this guy doing behind us? And then I get murked, right? And so it's like they got killed and screwed for no reason. And I got put over there in a team game and isolated from my team. So I'm just doomed. Like, I'm going to die, <laughs> right? Hey, here you go. Good luck dying. And then go, and then it spawns me back with my team. It's like it, it, like it gives me a teleportation power. It's like, hey, you died. Here, get some revenge, and then they're all going to kill you because it's their spawn. And then you're going to go back to your... What? I don't get issues like in previous Call of Duty games where people just spawn right behind me, necessarily. Like, literally directly behind you. Or like on Shipment in Modern Warfare or something like that where people would literally spawn and you're looking at them. <laughs> that doesn't seem to happen. But because of that, the spawns... I would rather... If someone legitimately infiltrates my team's spawn, that I spawn in front of them, which as much as that sucks, versus the game being like, well, I'm not going to spawn you there because there's like a guy. So I'm going to spawn you 10 feet behind their entire team. Like, that's not better. <laughs> okay. All right. Fine. Whatever. Um, and so the following for all the gameplay issues is because of these gameplay issues, this is why... I did the video Domination Sucks, and in general, team modes in Cold War fucking suck. All these issues put together make it really awful. And the reason I say team modes is because in individual modes, the score streaks aren't as big of an issue, the spawns aren't as big of an issue, the uh, weapon issues even aren't that big of an issue because in team modes, like snipers um, can really set up like a wall of murder, and even like one or two snipers can be really well protected by the rest of their team just moving around and playing the game. Right? So it makes it harder to dig out shitty snipers that are just locking places down. Free-for-all, not as big of an issue. So team modes in Cold War are really kind of awful, and these are kind of the reasons why. So, in my humble opinion. Speaking of my humble opinion, the last category I'm going to go over is what I call subjective issues, which are things that bother me that may not bother you. Uh, and the first thing that I will say is that the map design feels very... The word that I put down in my notes is bland. There is nothing about these maps that feels really special. Um, and when I think of that, immediately my brain goes, well, The Pines, that new map in the mall, actually isn't that bad. Like, I'm not sure I'm in love with it, but at least it doesn't feel bland and boring like, like most of these other ones do. Um, in the past with Call of Duty games, especially going back to like Modern Warfare, the original Modern Warfare, Call of Duty 4, I praised the three-lane design. Like, in Call of Duty, in Modern Warfare, in COD 4, that worked really well. The maps from COD 4 are some of my favorite of all time, and they were very simple three-lane maps, right? That doesn't... I think that's very dependent on gameplay, too. You can't have all of these issues that exist with the gameplay and the balance in Cold War and the hit detection and all that stuff, and the score streaks, and all of, all of this, all of this, all of this. All. You can't put all these problems together and then do just a simple three-lane map design, and it be good. And they're not even good three-lane map designs. Um, as much as I'm not even a huge fan of it, Satellite is perhaps one of the most interesting maps to play, just because it's got three lanes, but there's some variety to it. There's a high point in the middle. But all the rest of them, I mean, I'm having trouble even like bringing them up in like Garrison. And, and I mean, it's hard even bringing them in my brain as being entertaining to play. They don't feel good, like, and because of the spawns, it's just kind of like, I'm spawning all around. I don't know. The maps, just to me, don't feel good. I, you guys can share your opinions. That's just how it feels. Uh, the weapons. The, the, audio, the audio system and just the weapons in general, the way the recoil and stuff works. The weapons in Cold War feel like toys, like fucking airsoft guns versus Modern Warfare. When I did the uh, direct comparison video between Modern Warfare and Cold War, where I played Kill Confirmed in Cold War and then immediately launched Modern Warfare and played Kill Confirmed again, one of the first things I noticed is that my headset was a lot louder when I put on Modern Warfare, um, and it just is a lot more like boom like a, like being in a gunfight when you shoot in modern warfare it feels like boom, 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 boom. there's gunshots and there's snaps and cracks every time i get shot in cold war in the head it makes a sound like a sniper shot me which is very confusing every time but it's just, that's just bad sound design in general but the guns also just feel very pew 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 pew, pew. 
You guys enjoying these? Pew 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 In modern warfare. Anyway. Subjective. My preference. <laughs> Weapon progression is ridiculously slow in Cold War, and I've seen people talk about this, and it makes sense because there aren't that many weapons in Cold War. And I don't know, it feels like someone could easily check these numbers. I didn't beforehand, so I don't know if there's fewer weapons at the beginning of Cold War than there were at the beginning of Modern Warfare. I know there's more weapons in Modern Warfare now, but they've had like eight seasons or whatever to add two weapons per season, plus, well, three weapons per season, right? Because they had like a mid-season weapon. Anyway. There's a lot of guns in Modern Warfare, so it might be the same. It didn't feel like a slog, even early on in Modern Warfare, leveling up weapons and unlocking attachments. It feels like an absolute fucking grind in Cold War. It's awful. That's part of why one of the first things that I did for Cold War was post a how to rank up fast. And it's part of why I sought out and accidentally found that Free For All was the fastest way to rank up in Call of Duty uh, Cold War. Because I was just like, how the fuck do I rank these guns up faster? Because... It matters. Those attachments make the guns significantly better. So if you don't rank them up, they're not very good. And then it's like, well, because of the gameplay issues, it's like, how do I how do I just do this as fast as possible? That's never a good sign in a game. When your main thought is, this is awful, how do I get through it faster so that I can start having fun? In, as a As a contrast to that, I, when I do go back and play Modern Warfare now, because I went through and played and unlocked every attachment for every weapon as part of my uh, uh, weapon mo videos that I didn't make all of, <laughs> but I captured all the clips for, um, I'm going back and one of the things that I didn't do for like any of the weapons is unlock the reptile camos, which is done by using the weapons with no attachments. Like You have to basically rank the weapon all the way up, unlock all the attachments, and then for like 110 kills, you have to not use any attachments. Um, so I'm going back and doing some of that. And it's similar. Obviously, the weapons aren't nearly as good without attachments as they are with attachments. But they still feel significant and they still feel useful. And it's not not fun. <laughs> uh, and then the last thing I'm going to bring up, which is subjective, I say, because... Cold War is the new hotness, and it's got ray tracing, and it's got all of the technologies around it. But it looks worse than Modern Warfare. Even though Modern Warfare doesn't have ray tracing, it's, you know, even if you look kind of closely at it objectively, Modern Warfare, maybe some of the textures aren't as sharp. Just because it's a last generation game, and Cold War, the way that I'm playing it at least, built for and running on the PlayStation 5, higher res textures... Kind of. I mean, I was running on a PS4 Pro, so it's not like it wasn't 4K textures. Modern Warfare just looks way better than Cold War. To me. The Treyarch games, the Cold War, the, the, the Black Ops games, the Treyarch Black Ops games, and the Infinity Ward games, and even a lot of the other uh, just Call of Duty games in general, they have their own kind of art styles. Treyarch has always had a bit of a more bland art style, more realistic even, kind of, if you will. Um, but not in a way that my brain really says, well, this is way more realistic than Modern Warfare was. Modern Warfare, because of all the other things, like the audio design and the way that the weapons handled, felt a lot more realistic than Pew Pew Cold War. And Cold War looks looks awful. I mean, not like, oh my god, this is horrible trash, like a, like an Xbox 360 graphics level thing, but it seems like a noticeable step back from Modern Warfare. And that is a really bad shame. Because, again, like I said, it's maybe it's... No, it, it is fair. It's not unfair to compare Cold War to the game that immediately preceded it. That's how it works. If you're going to be in a series, you have, to, you have to be better than the previous game in the series. That's how it works, and Cold War just isn't. Uh, so, that's my, that's my bitch fest. What am I doing here? 20 minutes of bitching. I'm good at bitching, and you guys, you guys know that. So, tell me what the fuck bugs you about Cold War. Are you even still playing it? If you are playing it, how are you enjoying it? Like, what are you doing that makes you think, like, I'm having fun? Um, even the people that I follow on, like, on YouTube, uh, if anything, they've just gone back to uh, Warzone. And, you know, I, 
I may spend some more time in Warzone. I don't know. But if I just want to jump in and play some multiplayer and shoot some people for a while, I would rather jump into a multiplayer game for 10, 15 minutes, kill 20 people, and have a blast, as opposed to jumping into a 30-minute battle royale and killing six people. Like, I, I'm not saying I don't like that. That's fun, especially if I had a good squad to run with. That would be all kinds of fun. But if I just want to get in and shoot a bunch of people, it's multiplayer for me. And it sucks. <laughs> uh, so, yeah. Give me your thoughts down below. If you like this video, give me a like on the likey thing. Uh, if you guys aren't, I'm, I'm starting to say this. I say hello, minions. If you're not subscribed, you're not a minion. So become a minion, subscribe, and I will see you guys in future videos. And they're not all going to be bitching. I swear. <laughs> oh, my God. This is the, one of the fakest Call of Duty that I've made, bro. I can't even hold you. Mission terminated. All squads retreat.